What can you see here? It's a line, right? How about here? Another line. How about now? Oh wait, it's a line. What if I told you that only one of those lines was actually a line? The first one I showed you was a series of dashes. The second one was a random collection of circles. You see, what we see isn't ever exactly what's in front of us, but our cognitive perception of what's in front of us. We see with our brain. For some reason, our brains have adapted to seek out patterns and predictability in day-to-day -day life. We love to be able to double-guess things. And even if we're objectively wrong, we can still find a way to convince ourselves that actually we're right. It's how prejudices and stereotypes work. And it's also how you can see a triangle right now, even though we both know there's no triangle on the screen. If it were just a funny quirk of perception, it really wouldn't matter that your brain is subject to its own cognitive biases. But these biases affect our decisions and behaviours too. For example, doctors who see patients with a particular illness over and over again are more likely to subsequently misdiagnose a future patient as they'll more easily perceive symptoms that match the pattern that has now become familiar to them. No matter how well educated we might be, we can still find ourselves tricked by what is called a cognitive set. A set, which is a similar concept to a schema, is the predetermined way an individual construes a situation which is based on a group of concepts related to the self and other things that determines an individual's view of the world and influences his or her behaviour. Perhaps a simple way to remember and visualise a set is to think of athletes at the beginning of a race. If you just blow the whistle without warning, the runners will be slower off the mark. But if you give them warning by saying, get set, they'll run a faster race. The set has prepared them for an expected response so they can get to it quicker. Of course, cognitive sets can be extremely useful to us, hence why they exist, but they're not always so great. One example of a negative set is called functional fixedness. What can you do with this fork? You can use it as a tool to make little bows to stick on presents. You can use it to scratch that part of your back that you can't reach with your hands. Or, as most people would say, you can eat with it. Functional fixedness is a cognitive bias that limits a person to using an object only in the way that it is typically used. The term was originally coined by Duncan in 1945 and illustrated by an experiment called the candle problem. You've got a box of pins, a candle and matches. Your task is to secure the candle to a cork board on the wall in such a way that you can light the candle with the matches. The solution is to empty the box of pins, pin that box to the cork board, place the candle on the new box shelf and light the candle. What Dunker found was that if participants were given the box with pins in it, they found it difficult to see the alternative use for the box. However, participants who were given an empty box separate from the pins were able to come to solution with greater ease. Like the dotted line that we saw at the beginning of this video, Dunker's participants saw the whole rather than the parts. They saw a box of pins, not a box and pins. So how can we overcome this natural cognitive bias? Well first, as with all biases, becoming consciously aware of its existence helps us to tackle it head on because we know what to keep an eye out for. But we can also develop strategies and games to strengthen our ability to engage in divergent thinking. One such strategy is to come up with lists of alternative uses for everyday items, to consciously train your mind to look for alternatives. I remember a particular job interview where I was asked to list as many uses as I could for a sock and this is the skill that they were testing for. A simple exercise as well is to break down an item into its constituent parts. Don't see the whole, see the parts. Instead of seeing a table, see legs, countertop, drawers, draw handles, screws and so on and so on. Edward de Bono's lateral thinking puzzles are also a really fun and definitely challenging approach to developing alternative ways of thinking about problems. And more generally, Carol Dweck's work on the growth mindset is well worth reading to understand how to apply this flexible growth-led mindset, not just to individual challenges, but to your life in general. Thank you to Practical Intelligence for requesting this video and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button to let me know or drop me a comment in the comment section below. 
If it's your first time here, subscribe to Psychology Unlocked and hit that notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.